Okay, well, I might as well get going and do the welcome, say hello to everybody. Um, so thanks for joining us in the Gen Game Q&A room. And it was a great demo day. Um, great effort by all the startups, not just Gen Game, and the team at Startup Bootcamp. And I hope that everybody really enjoyed the show. Um, so this is the Q&A session. And this is where you get to ask questions from the founders. Jeremy is one of the founders. I'm a, a host who's working with Jeremy during the program um, to assist with Sorry, working in Australia. Switch networks. And you can ask any questions either in the, well, ideally in the question box down the bottom. I don't know if anybody, everybody can see the question box down the bottom. Just click on that and launch a question into there. Um, and if you've got any questions around the business model or the go-to-market strategies, or if you want to know about their future plans, this is probably the best place to go ask it. So hopping across now. So we've got no questions there straight away. Please feel free to drop some in. Um, in the first instance, so Jeremy, one of the things that um, I noticed when I started uh, hearing more about your uh, business is the background that you had with the team and the thing that was most important about the design. Could you just talk a little bit more about um, what it is about your um, uh, team that enabled um, consumer engagement. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so I think from a personal point of view, um, having been in the energy world for quite a while, um, a lot of energy products you get out there look like they've been designed by engineers. <clears throat> and that's great for a small portion um, of the world, but uh, most people are not engineers. So consumers playing such a big role in the energy market, being responsible for such a huge portion of demand. Um, yeah, it didn't really make any sense that it was so hard to access and understand um, energy uh, in, in general. So yeah, our team deliberately brought together designers who knew nothing about energy or very little, but knew a lot about how to communicate things and condense them down into simple um, terms so yeah our, our design team um are specifically non-energy people um and we have these great conversations to turn these um in some cases quite complex um energy situations and and um propositions condense them down into really simple uh, propositions that uh the the vast majority of um consumers would understand so um yeah no really okay. important part of our business and and so your business it's i'm focused around obviously you build the app for the retailer the, the retailers customers download that app um how does it save the retailers customers money has it saved the end customer money yeah yeah how does it help yeah out? in it's in a few ways really um so we, we've got a, a few different modules, but for example, um, at a basic level, it helps people understand what they're using and be more in tune with that. So they realize, uh, particularly if they have a smart meter, we have good data from their home, uh, they realize what they're using and when. Um, there's the, the old thing, if you can't measure it, how can you, how can you reduce it? But um, yeah. making that really visible and obvious uh, suddenly you can you can tune in on the really high usage you can see if um, if it was a cold period um, uh, suddenly the usage shot up um, and they can they can really start to understand what drives their consumption patterns and that's something we help with as well we're not just throwing data at them for them to make up their own minds but we help correlate it with other other things that are going on so so there's overall reductions to so they're using less energy overall um, but then depending what they have in their house as well, because every home is quite different, um, will help them save specifically for their home arrangement. So if they have solar, will help um, inform them of when their panels are likely to be generating a lot. So they can then coincide their usage with that. So they're buying less from their retailer uh, and using more of what they generate. Um, okay, fantastic. Yeah. 
And now if you talk about the, um, the value proposition to the retailer perhaps, so what is it that the value that you offer the retailer in terms of reducing their costs or um, helping them in other ways? And if anybody's got a question, by the way, for uh, Bob, yeah, we're, that one, Jerry, we're please pop it into the, the Q&A section. Um, and I might pop out, uh, once you've done this, allow people to talk so we can, because there's a small enough group of people that we can have a fairly informal yeah. uh, conversation, which would be great. Yeah, that would be great. Um, so from the retailer's point of view, there's, there's a couple of main value sources. Uh, a big one is, is from customer loyalty. <clears throat> um, so retailers at the moment spend a lot on acquiring customers and about 20% of those customers leave each year that's typical churn rate um so if the retailer is able to set up a strong relationship through an, an app that actually helps that consumer then they're much more likely to stay and we're we're generating results at the moment um uh just starting to to really understand how how much difference we can make on on reducing churn is a big one but um another key source is reducing the opex of of handling those customers um Every time a customer calls up to the retailer, there's a cost incurred. Um, and a lot of those calls are very avoidable because the consumers can't access basic information or process basic um, account hygiene through a digital uh, zero contact um, channel. Um, so, okay. so it's about yeah, reducing OPEX and, and customer care costs as much as it is um, keeping customers for longer. Okay, great. I'll just open it up so that others can um, can ask questions directly. I'll yeah, keep sure. going. Um, if people want to pop themselves off mute as they go along, that's the, the if they want to ask a question, please feel free. Um, so, have you got any um, uh, any information on the amount of peak demand that you've managed to move to um, other periods of the day? Um, in to assist retailers and gen tailors in their operations? Yeah. Um, yeah, so our, our, that's on a demand response part of our product. <clears throat> we have a yep. module that um, that does that for, for those who aren't familiar. Um, and actually our biggest project to date has been around um, moving peak demand uh, through, we did that through a, a spaceship game actually. Um, but we managed to achieve uh, yeah, reliable uh, 10% reductions in, in peak demand um, over periods of, of sort of half an hour up to, up to a, a few hours. Um, and 10% reductions are very valuable to uh, uh, distribution networks as well, um, as well as the retailers. So what we're working on at the moment is uh, using those bits of um, app functionality and uh, transferring them into a retailer demand response environment where they can be used around spot price trading um, or uh, matching with the retailer's generation, um, which is particularly valuable for uh, retailers who have a lot of renewable generation um, where they can't control um, so much uh, when, when that's gonna be available, but they are exposed to the market. Um, yeah, okay. So yeah. Uh, at least 10% is the um, short answer. Yeah. So given that you cr you've got an app that um, the retailer's customers download and um, depending on what they do with it, it might change their behavior in some way. Why is it that a retailer would go to yourself and license that product from, from you with the modules that it's got rather than either getting the in-house team or working with a, a general app developer? Yeah, it's, um, Good question. Uh, so short answer is that they, the, the modules that we have built um, are very specific to um, energy and we're, we're um, much quicker to turn them around is one. They're already built, mm -hmm. so you're not having to start yep. from scratch uh, is another. Um, I think it's often underestimated how much effort is involved in building an app that both has good usable features and also is reliable. Um, if you look through the app store for retailer apps um, in Australia, a lot of the complaints, so m most of them are very poorly rated, sort of less than two stars. And one of the most common complaints is that people can't even um, log in um, and register <laughs> and like the really basic things. So for a channel that is there and is designed to reduce um, customer contact, 
and and make a retailer look better it ends up looking worse in a lot of cases um even if they do get over that barrier as a retailer, uh, the development cycles are generally very slow. The IT teams are very limited. So using us, we've got pre-built modules that can be deployed much more quickly than, than building something themselves. We're energy specialists, so we understand the um, context and the content of, of both what should be in it for the retailer's point of view, but also for the consumer. Um, so the information is accurate um and and put in a useful context um so yeah it's faster it's cheaper um, that makes sense. and we're continuously developing it as well um and that's what i get through the subscriptions yeah okay um and in australia what's the f sort of footprint that you have here you've, you've got a lot of experience in the uk and other markets but what about over here yeah so we've uh, we arrived in january um and have spoken to uh yeah a reasonable chunk of of the market um there's a big spread of retailer sizes um from the the the, the big ones the three tier ones right down to tier mm -hmm. threes and we've, we've spoken to retailers in all of those categories um most notably energy australia um mm -hmm. we're working with and that's by far our, our most advanced um um conversation um, yep. and we've, we've done a bit of work to validate our product with with their customers um right around the country um but yeah we're uh, speaking with a number of retailers of all of all sizes and it's um yeah there's interest sure. from different levels um for different reasons. Um, got a question from helen um uh how much customer research have you carried out and how how was it carried out in terms of energy cost consumers and Helen, if you want to, you're welcome to unmute yourself and um, ask the question directly if you'd like. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thanks, Steve. Yeah. I'm always curious hi, about how, hi, Jeremy, a startup gets information to make sure that it's developing something that is really needed in the market. I know that the retailers are perhaps your customers, but you have to convince them it's their customers, I guess, that need what you have. Um, so how much research did you carry out on the electricity consumer, like, you know, the friend, the mother with two children, and how was it yep. done? Yeah, um, so that is the, the first stage in our um, development process. So that's where our, our design team come in and they deal, so they do a lot of uh, primary research with customers. They look at um, all sorts of literature that's been published from energy consumer associations. Um, and then when we're thinking about developing uh, new features. One of the first things we do is is when we have some ideas, go out to those consumers and ask questions around that topic to really understand what their needs are. And that's um, that's part of the work we've been doing with Energy Australia as well. Um, and we've done that over the last couple of years with with all of our products. So we really have to hear it from the customers uh, to steer which direction the product goes in, which features are most important, and then. Based on that primary research we do with them, we put together some um, clickable wireframes and prototype products and then put them back in front of, of new customers to see if we'd interpreted that information correctly. Um, and yeah, we, we keep cycling everything we do and everything we build back to consumers to see what makes sense, what doesn't, what's easy to use, uh, how we can improve it, because um, other, otherwise we're guessing and then right through to having products live. Um, once the apps are built, we have a lot of analytics within the apps to see how people are using it. Um, and we make it very easy for our users to give feedback, um, both uh, within the app uh, and also on, on the app store. And we, we look at all of those um, sources to, to prioritize and make changes um, and bring in the features that are important to, to those users. Great, thank you. Thanks, Helen. Um, could you maybe talk us through the different modules that you have? Because I know that your product actually focuses on changing different kinds of behavior in the end consumers and offering different features for the retailer. Yeah, sure. Um, so we've, we've structured our product into different modules purely because different retailers have very different needs. Um, some 
retailers don't have an app at all. So we start with the, the kind of basic uh, my account type features where you can see your account details, your uh, energy plan, your recent bills, um, kind of what, what you might call the basics just to get them going. Whereas when we're working with a much more established retailer, they often have an app already, but they want to start exploring demand response or uh, release some solar features or um, technology modules around electric vehicles, say. So the, the whole spread of what we're working on is, is the My Account um, uh, things. We have uh, a smart meter module where we uh, collect and present that information and insights from smart meters that we can gather based on where the user is and, and all sorts of things we, we um, ask the customer about their home. Uh, the more information we get, the richer those features can be. Um, solar is one of our quite popular modules. We've done a bit of work on in the past year to say take an energy forecast or sorry, a solar forecast from where that household lives and show them how well their solar um, system has done all without hardware based on their export meter reads um, uh, what else we got electric vehicles we've done a lot of work on in the last uh, 18 months or so both from a uh, kind of dumb charging point of view where we don't get any feedback um, but we help users to schedule their charges for uh, greener times maybe where there's more renewables on the grid and understand how much energy their car is using related to their whole house, right through to uh, smart charging and even vehicle to grid um, is something we've started working on. So we're mm -hmm. uh, quite ahead on that one. Um, we've got a battery module coming in because we're starting to see homes um, pair up their solar with, with um, residential batteries. Mm -hmm. um, so we can start to offer um, uh, uh, rewards and incentives for um, households offering an element of control to their retailer so they can uh, charge and discharge at um, times that are advantageous in the market and then share the value of doing that. Um, I think that's that's about all. Oh, and, and heating uh, technologies as well around AC and, and um, heating and cooling, particularly heating in the UK, um, where there's uh, electric heating and, and heat pumps are starting to come through. Um, okay, so, so what you see, you're seeing the, the usage of those through the app, so you can turn them on and off on certain conditions, or what is it that yeah. the app does in that? So in, in that, all of those smart home technologies, <clears throat> we're feeding into um, demand response type um, module. Um, so users can understand what energy impact that technology has in their home when it's used, how much mm -hmm. it's using, um, but mm -hmm. also so they can start to adjust their usage times uh, to benefit uh, the grid and themselves based on market and grid conditions and renewable on the price conditions. of energy or yeah okay right. yeah and are there, how do the, how do people get motivated um, to to change that behaviour what's what have you got built into the platform for that yeah so each um, each user has different motivations um, some want to you know be as green as they can and they're less price sensitive others just want it to be as cheap as possible. Um, so we, we have a number of mechanisms in the app that incentivize customers to shift their usage to, um, uh, to optimal times for whatever they're interested in. And, and yeah, the main ones are price and carbon. Um, okay. So if they're able to, use, we will publish ahead of time, say the, you know, for the next 24 hours, what are the cheapest times? What are the greenest times? And if they manage to shift their usage into those times, we give them points um, and then they can use those points either to redeem credit uh, from their bill or they can uh, maybe uh, translate those into um, donations if they're interested in environmental charities that's something we've um, uh, done a bit of research on and, and starting to integrate but also um, gamifying the rewards um, is something we're we're really quite keen on and, and has been um, successful in the past so so you can uh, chance it with the points that you do earn and instead of winning maybe a, a you know a few dollars credit you can maybe win a few hundred dollars um uh if you, oh, if right. you kind of, um as, as a bit of a draw to win um so then people end up offering more and more to get more points which is their chance of winning the prize mm -hmm. um so yeah trying to 
innovate with uh, reward mechanisms is, is a big part of what we do as well, just to make it a bit more interesting than winning one or two dollars here and there. Now, I've got a few questions that have come up. Thank you very much. Um, I'll yep. go to Phil's first. Um, so is it a one-stop shop? Uh, shop and how does the pricing work as well? Is it, you talked a little bit about the modules. I think um, Phil's asking about what are the, uh, does it do everything that a retailer would need? Uh, yes, that's that's our ambition. Um, <clears throat> we, in terms of consumer-facing requirements, uh, we we're building it to meet uh, all of those. Yeah, the place we're starting is the most um, sort of common and the easiest wins. So there are some complex matters that a consumer would want to contact their retailer for, and they're uh, very unique. So we're we're starting with yeah the very general account hygiene. Um, but uh, yeah, ultimately, all of the technologies, demand response, uh, batteries, we, we're trying to combine all the different modules we've got. So they, they can work in any, any number of combinations. Um, and there are, the combinations we've built so far are just based on the, on the needs of the retailers we're working with so far. But the, the ultimate aim is yeah, to combine them so it is a one-stop shop where our modules can be mixed and matched. Um, and that's where we're, we're hoping to be by um, the end of this year. Yeah. Thanks, Phil. So if you want to pop yourself off mute to ask anything else around that topic, feel free. Um, in the meantime, Kim, please got a question which asks what you're hoping about. Oh, what you're hoping There for was pricing today. as well. Sorry, I, I didn't touch on um, ah, the pricing component. Yeah, from the, from the previous question. Um, so, yeah, we, we have a, a kind of standard um, base pricing for uh, depending on the modules that are involved because they there are slightly different costs of us operating each of those modules depending on the industry mm -hmm. services we need to to connect to um, but one of the big uh, cost drivers is how straightforward the integration to the retailer is so um, we've done that in a few different ways for a few different retailers connecting to their CRM and their billing engine um, but yeah, in the best cases, it's it's APIs, and that's that's um, yeah a, a relatively straightforward job to set up. But in some cases, it can take six months or a year. So the um, the costs are uh, they they vary purely based on um, how how hard it is to get the information we need from that retailer. Um, but but we'll work with them to make that as as simple as possible, um, and really try and keep that barrier to entry as as low as we can, so they can offer something um as soon as possible and then and then build out depending on what their their customers are asking for mm. um, okay uh thank you um so another question came up uh gen games developed software platforms offering service uh, my understanding is a platform platform vendor agnostic and can work with different hardware providers or have you partnered with a specific vendor um and develop your own hardware yeah, so uh, a few answers there. We we don't develop any of our own hardware, um, and yes, mm -hmm. we are hardware agnostic. Um, we have a few particular partners we've been working with, um, based on existing partnerships generally of of the energy retailers we've worked with. But um, yeah, that's where our development team comes in. Um, and we have a few integration partners as well who we, we specifically use them to um, go and integrate with this new type of electric vehicle charger or battery. Um, <clears throat> so we have one standard interface with them uh, and it's, it's their business model to go and, and um, integrate as many end devices uh, as possible. So yeah, mm. if, if there's a, a good reason to integrate with a particular new type of technology, then, then yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Okay. And what, what conversations are you, um, thank you for the question, uh, Kimberly asks, what kind of conversations are you hoping to have today? Investors, partners, pilots? Um, ideally, yeah, customers and pilots are our, our main interest. We, we do have um, products live that are ready to be um, deployed. So I, I think our main interest is in uh, speaking with energy retailers to um, launch our products. I think I said in, in the pitch, only 10 retailers in Australia of the 40 have actually got an app. Um, so there is a lot of room for retailers to differentiate themselves. Um, but uh, if we're going to do a, a big Australian launch, there will be some investment required. So keen to start some relationships there as well. Um, mm -hmm. We're 
we're mid raise in the uh, in the UK at the moment, which is going going well. Um, okay, that's so, congratulations given the conditions. That must yeah, that says a lot about yeah. your business. Um, <laughs> it's, it's going well so far. You never you're never sure until it's until it's landed. But um, no, promising signs so far. No one no one's pulled out. Um, <clears throat> and um, yeah, that, a lot of those are quite long held relationships as well, and some of them are, are customers of ours. So. Um, yeah, no, that's that's uh, encouraging to us. So, yeah, mainly keen to speak with with retailers for for projects, but very happy to speak with potential investors and also technology partners. Um, because the more integrations we have, the richer uh, our product is for the customers that are using it. So we're we're always on the lookout for for those relationships. Yeah. Very good. Um, question from Todd and from Sarah, which is sort of related. What have what have you seen? about the differences in the Australian and UK market and what is it that customers in both territories have been asking for? Yeah, it's, um, it's very similar to the UK in some ways, very different in others. Um, there's, there's no way we have a, um, <clears throat> a daytime uh, uh, peak demand in the UK, which, which is something that happened. Um, clearly in Australia, Australian summer, everyone's cranking the AC. That's that's what drives your peak demand. So it's the same mm. effects are happening, but for different reasons. Um, so it it means our technology does transfer quite well because you still have expecting grid constraint times. Um, so in, in terms of how it's like kind of effects and mechanisms that we're integrating with. Um, and from consumers, there's a lot of similarities as well. Um, there is a portion of the market who is concerned about the environment. So they're interested in the carbon messaging and sustainability aspects of what we do. Um, but also like everyone is cost conscious, particularly at the moment. So understanding costs, being on top of what the next bill is going to be. Um, yeah, it's very much the same here and in Australia. Um, Australia has a lot more solar. Um, uh, I think 25% penetration. So that's more of an opportunity in Australia. And that's, that's one of the things we're, we're um, sort of fast tracking, I guess, for that reason. Um, and certain things work differently. So in the UK, we don't really have export metering in the same way you do here. So there's actually more we can do in Australia with the, the data that's available um, to give new insights, um, which, which we can't currently in the UK. So mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Jeremy. For the people who just entered the room recently, feel free to ask questions in the question section or pop your mic off and just shout out and ask a um, question directly to Jeremy, the head of utility projects from Gencat. Um, off your product now for a bit. Um, what, how did you find the, um, the accelerator experience? What's yeah. the last 12 weeks or so been like? It's been a lot of fun, <laughs> particularly <laughs> while I was in Australia before I had to wake up <laughs> at silly o'clock and stay up um, <clears throat> uh, late. But no, the accelerator has been fantastic. Um, working with such a diverse group of um, uh, entrepreneurs and technologists and, and business people that have come from all different backgrounds. Um, uh, yeah, so it's been it's been fantastic having the really concentrated um, uh, input from so many different angles. Overwhelming at times, and, mm -hmm. but yeah, just just really good. Um, after the first couple of weeks, when you we kind of figured what was going on, because we're you're in a bubble when you're in a uh, our startup, and we you know we think we know what's what. Um, what we need to do and we're on this track and then suddenly all of that gets challenged um, when you're writing your business model canvas and and you've got people challenging you with different things for different reasons so um, whether it was developing our business model or how we do pricing <clears throat> um, or the um, like the category design workshop we have with Josephine um, just angles we'd, we'd never thought of that open our eyes to new new ideas, new ways of doing things. Um, yeah, a lot of fun. And um, everyone's been yeah right behind making sure we um, push for um, <clears throat> developing things as quickly and as, as, um, as well as we can. So yeah, really, really positive. Great. Uh, and, uh, it's been great working with you during that period of time as well. So um, yeah. I've learned Likewise. a lot from you, which has been great. Um, 
how did you start the business in the first place? How did the, the, the idea of the germinate? What, what was it? I... Yeah, um, it was, it, its roots were actually quite a few years ago, probably six or seven years ago when I worked in an engineering consultancy and we, we used to work on them. Um, well, that consultancy was all around um, uh, big heat and power industrial sort of gas turbine work so we we had an idea of the grid from that side <clears throat> excuse me um Plus one. but we started <laughs> got one actually <laughs> or coffee um but yeah we 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 started to um think about the other end of the system and we ran a couple of small research projects uh to see if we could uh encourage customers energy users to start to offer demand response in the way that we could provide power from um, big generators. Um, and we, we were just amazed by the results. Um, we, the, the very first thing we did was ask uh, households to use energy through smart plugs that we could turn off at, at any time. And some of the homes, uh, because of the, the points and game system that we put in place, were using about 40% of their home energy through these smart plugs, um, just because we turned it into a bit of a game. Um, and that was that was a shock um and yeah over the next few years we managed to um sort of hone in um the ideas and propositions and, and the value that where it might be most valuable um won a couple of uh, r d funded projects and turned it into a business um yeah a couple of years ago um and over that period of time which is asking now somebody's asked how yeah. many um, customers have you onboarded? How many registrations have you had of platforms? So we're we've <laughs> had um, we're in the we're in the thousands. No, we're um, I understand. That's Rich saying. Missed that. Um, yeah, yeah no, we're we're up to a few thousand over the over the different projects. Um, we've tended to um, keep the customer numbers relatively small as we've been testing the ideas and honing the product. Um, but we're very much at the stage now where we're building our systems so they can scale from, um, you know, the the few hundred and the few thousand that you need to validate the ideas and the long term engagement um to a point where we can uh we're, we're productionizing it and you, we can go from that few thousand and then suddenly release it to the next um ten thousand or, or fifty thousand or a hundred thousand so over the next year or two we're going to be going from low thousands up to um hundreds of thousands um and we're building the relationships with the retailers now that um so we know everything works smoothly um before we go big because I've, I've been in stuffs before where they've tried to go big before they've really smoothed out all of the systems processes products features integrations and mm -hmm. something doesn't work and you've got hundreds of thousands of customers it's a much bigger problem than than um the the smaller numbers so um yeah it's a really exciting time for us so what described that plan for you over the next 12, 18 months or two years in terms of growth and onboarding new retailers? What, what are your plans and capabilities with capacity? So the, the growth is coming from um, two places, uh, one of which is growing the user base with our existing retail customers and um, the, the products we've been developing and testing so far from those sort of uh, low thousands of users um, up to the tens and hundreds of thousands of users for those retailers. Um, and the other is working with new, new retailers. Um, <clears throat> uh, so yeah, and it's um, a slightly different problem setting up a new project with a new retailer has a lot of upfront or well, can have a lot of upfront effort to get integrated and launched. Um, but then scaling with existing ones is, is um, uh, I suppose a faster way to grow, but you, you've got to, do that at the right time so you you don't end up with a bigger problem in in a few weeks um so yeah that's broadly the plan uh, most of it is um most of our growth over the next year or so will be in in the uk um mm -hmm. but we because we've had those products um in development for um number of months or, or years in some cases um but in Australia, we're just getting to the point of uh, hopefully first launch in the next few months of the products, make sure we've got all the systems ironed out. And then later this year, we'll be looking at, at growing those as well. Yeah. Great. That sounds like a, a, a sensible plan, but also a, um, uh, it's, a, it's strong growth. 
Uh, Richard asked a follow-up question. How IT intensive is the integration with an energy provider? And so right now he's saying he provides natural gas to the home within six months, um, and also decentralized residential solar uh, solar in uh, Portugal. So that's very early in the morning for you as well there. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm just going to read that question. So that's in the queue, how INT intensive. Um, yeah, so that um, <laughs> simple answer is it, it depends. Um, <laughs> Our, our dev team um, have done a number of different integrations with, with very different types of uh, retailer IT systems. Um, they're happy to work in a number of different ways, but um, at, at a basic level, um, if the retailer has access to, to their customer data via API, that's the easiest way of, of us integrating, and that can be up and running in, in, um, in a few weeks is, is the mm -hmm. best case. Um, in some cases, the data that we need to operate the app exists in a number of different, different systems, so there is a, a larger task of, of getting integrated. But in that case, we'll try and uh, maybe launch a, a lighter version of the product in the first instance with the easiest data to access, and then uh, rather than, than waiting many months to launch anything when we've got everything we need. So yeah, there's, there's always a, a conversation around. So what's the minimum integration points that you would have with a retailer? So depending on the modules they're interested in, um, mm -hmm. we can, So if you pick we, their most popular one or two? Yeah, so most of what we've done is actually on, on the demand response side right now, um, because the, the information we need to operate the app there is generally just smart meter data. Um, but we do need to validate that the users are who they say they are. So there is an element of, of um, integrating with their account system. Uh, and there's mm -hmm. a few different ways we've, we've done that. But um, uh, yeah, it's validating a user is who they say they are through their account number or email address and mm -hmm. uh, location. Um, and after then, the, the only data we need to operate is really the smart meter data. Um, so it, it can be very light. Um, and how do you typically get the smart data metadata? Is that direct or? Uh, so there's a couple of different ways. Um, yeah, d direct from the retailer um, is is the kind of, uh, the, the I suppose, the default way default. of doing things. Yep. In the UK, there's a system called the DCC, which is the data and communications company, which is where every um, home's smart meter data will go. So we have a way of accessing data from there. So all we need is the householder consent to access their data, and then we can we can collect that. So there is an opportunity there to do a kind of B to C proposition rather than through the retailer, but that's mm -hmm. that's not not our focus right now. Um, so yeah, there's 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 different ways, but API with the retailer is is straightforward. Um, we can have you know shared databases where they uh, put the smart meter data as, as CSV transfers, or there's there's a whole host of different ways. But um, generally, would that typically be weeks, or if there's no app development required, if it's just an integration point for using your existing features, um, is it weeks yeah, or months? If, if it's um it can be weeks if it's uh similar to how we we do it already if if the data format can be mm. shared in a in a way that's if it's you know a carbon copy of of an existing product we have elsewhere then yeah that mm. that can be weeks to get something up and running um some of the delays come from um the the app stores themselves so if it's the first app um and it's a new developer and a new app that you're launching the app mm -hmm. stores themselves have um a week or two's kind of testing time before they will approve your app for release on the app store so um right now it, it even if we could integrate instantly it's um yeah it's uh, you're looking at weeks as a as a minimum um but but that's yeah that's that's achievable Okay, fantastic. Um, we're close to wrapping up four o'clock now. Is there anything that you in particular would like to share or are there any um, questions from the audience that are still with us uh, that would like answers no that we questions. haven't covered? We've got one from Richard there. Our customers don't oh, understand anything coming. about energy invoice. Yes, yeah, so certainly the electricity bill. Um, you know, why am I being charged what I am being charged? Um, 
trying to break that down in terms of the volume component and the daily charge um, to explain where each of those cost elements have come from. Uh, yeah, is a big part of our um, sort of my account and smart meter modules um, because when you get the the paper bill or the, the email bill through it's it's um, it speaks a different language it's kilowatt hours and, and terminology that the user doesn't understand so really trying to make that clear is, is a big do, part of what we do. Do you have any um, data on what the average number of interactions with your apps are per user uh, that would indicate how many calls you've saved the call center? Um, yeah, in terms of average interactions, it, it really varies by product. So we've got some products, say, for um, electric vehicle charging to promote charging at green times. And we've got users um, multiple times a day checking when the greenest times are because we have these huge renewable swings in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, so it can be multiple times a day <clears throat> for some users. For others, if it's a, um, a my account type, product then that mm -hmm. can be once a month once every three months you know you, you don't want to hassle people you want to make mm -hmm. it easy for them to do what they're trying to do um, so we're not striving just for as many interactions as we can get with the customers um, but yeah in terms of reducing um, reducing calls we don't have um, stats from that yet we're, we're just building mm -hmm. sort of our the, the statistical significance we need to be confident about about those claims um, with our first few customers um, but uh, yeah, yeah we're, okay. we're tracking everything they're doing in the app so so that should be straightforward to infer and, and they're quite busy in the apps when they've got them so okay hopefully that answers your question Richard whether you wanted um, So this webinar will be available if you wanted to listen to the whole. They didn't get to catch all of it, um, so it'll be available as a recording. Um, the, if you want to get in touch with Jeremy to talk about either funding or becoming a customer or just generally interested in the work he's doing, he's very happy to um, take calls. The email address is there, jeremy at gengame.co.uk. Um, so thanks again. We hope you've enjoyed the Startup Bootcamp Energy Australia 2020 Demo Day and Extended QA edition with um, Jenga. And thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. No, it's been, been a lot of, lot of fun working with you, Stephen. And um, yeah, no, we'll, we'll be in touch. <laughs> Next Hopefully time you get one of our airplane. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, I will. That could be a while. <laughs> that could be a while. But no, it's been great. And uh, thanks, everyone, for your questions. Very good. All right. Speak soon. Okay, thank you everybody. I'll see you. Bye. Signing out. Good stuff, Jeremy. Good Thanks job, man. Really good. Still recording. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, how are you doing? Nothing.